good time to be a Diamondbacks fan, even mm -hmm. if you don't mention a certain Mr. Rosario. And attendance is up. That's a good thing. And there's reasons why. This is Locked On MLB, Locked On Diamondbacks, crossover. You are Locked On MLB. Your daily MLB podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network. Your team every day. Hello, baseball fans, and welcome to the Locked On MLB, Locked On Diamondbacks crossover with all new graphics. Shiny, shiny. There are words right over there. This is the Locked On MLB is the daily podcast where we talk about all of Major League Baseball, Locked On Diamondbacks. Guess who they cover? No, guess. I am your host, Paul Francis Sullivan. Please call me Sully. Right over there is my guest host for today. Please sign in, please. Yes, Miller Thomas, host of the Locked on Diamondbacks podcast. The team tied for the most wins in the National League at the time of us recording this Monday, 6-13 p.m. June 5th. It feels good. If you want to see my thoughts on my D-backs, go follow me on Twitter at CreatorThomas24 for my personal account. Look up Locked on Diamondbacks, both Twitter, Instagram for the podcast handle. We're streaming on all platforms, and we're also on YouTube, so please hit subscribe on the Locked on Dimebacks YouTube channel. Please. This show is, this particular episode, is brought to you by Game Time. Download the Game Time app, create an account, and use the code Locked on MLB for $20 off your first purchase. Last minute tickets, lowest price, guaranteed. Hey, um, it's funny. I mentioned this in the previous show, uh, and the D-backs haven't played since that game. I was listening to that final game between uh, Arizona and the Braves. And I remember thinking, oh, this is going to be so great. When we're going to have Miller on. They'll have taken two out of three from Atlanta. Mm -hmm. And then Rosario comes up and hits the grand slam. Um, it, was a, it was a kick to the knees to the D-backs, but one which for Diamondback fans suddenly became big Yankee fans because despite the – Attempts by the Dodgers to win the game and have their breakaway stadium have doors open up when Aaron Judge collides on them. Uh, the the Dodgers wound up losing that series to the Yankees. And as Stacy Gatsoulias said, the way the Yankees are playing now looks like they were the way they were playing in the first half last year. They're suddenly everything was going wrong for the Yankees the first quarter of the season. Now they're firing in all signatures on all cylinders and signatures. I don't know what I'm saying. But uh, the the D-backs have been the recipient of that because the they are now, they're tied for first place. Uh, they were in first place for a big chunk of April. Then they fell as far as three and a half games. May, I think, yeah, three and a half games out uh, a few months uh, in the middle of May. But they have been on a tiny bit of a rampage and in fact, if you go, they lost uh, to a game in San Francisco on the 11th day of May. Mm -hmm. And let me do it after this date. My baseball reference.com, the single greatest website in the history of the planet Earth, not a sponsor. And since that game, Arizona is 15 and 7, which Oof. is the best record in the National League for basically almost the last month. Uh, it, we're, this is being dropped on the 6th of June. And that was May 11th. So almost a month has gone mm -hmm. by. And the D-backs have the best record in the National League at that time. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I thought you were going to ask me a question or something. No, <laughs> yeah. I, just, I, I want you to bask in the glory. <laughs> yeah. I, I was down for a moment of silence in a positive way to talk about the D-backs and their record. Because who would have thought this is where we would have been after 60 games, right? So baseball. I think a lot of people were like, you know what? D-backs, maybe the dark horse team of the year, maybe D-backs positive regression. But hey, even me, the locked on Diamondbacks fan, I was like, you know what? If we get 80 wins, if we're a 500 team this year, that's all I need for this to be a successful D-back season. Now, after 60 games, week by week, month by month, my expectations and the ceiling for this team, I think, just continue to rise where I don't know where to stop. I still don't think this is a true World Series contender or a team that can win the championship, but does this team need to make the playoffs and put themselves in position to win as many playoff games as possible and go 
as deep into October as possible. Yeah, with the way this team is playing and the talent that they have, this team needs to do everything possible to make sure they have the best chance to win in October. And as it currently stands, they're as good as any team in the National League because they are tied for the most wins at the time of us recording this. They got the front line. They got stars in their lineup. The bullpen needs a little bit of work, as we saw in that series finale against the Atlanta Braves. But it's hard to argue that the D-backs are maybe not the most exciting team and maybe the breakout team of this season. And I want to make one point here, that they were, what, three some odd games back or whatever it was at that point. They went 15-7. and seven. This is not an instance where the Dodgers are collapsing. Mm-mm. In that same stretch of time, the Dodgers have a winning record. So it's not like the Dodgers have been on a huge slump when the D-backs have, have caught them in the standings. Now look at this is again, of course, there's still a hundred about a hundred games left in the schedule, roughly. So a lot can happen. But we're also deep enough in the season. As I said, this is June and July are what I call mirror time, the mirror time months for a franchise. Where you mm. have to really look in the mirror and say, Okay, are we gonna go for it or not? Are we gonna make the big move or not? And the Diamondbacks, I think, are in an, an enviable position for their team. They have some players in their farm who could be decent chips or could be decent people to bring up. Um, it's amazing how you know getting rid of Madison Bumgarner, uh, pulling the Band-Aid off of that, you know, yeah. has been a, a smart move. Zach Gallen. Yes. Gallen, yes. Merrill Kelly. Mm, that is as good a one-two punch in the National League. And Tommy Henry has pitched well. Um, yeah. And, you know, uh, Jameson has done okay. Yeah. He's all Not right. great, but you're at, he's basically your, he's your four at this point, right? He and, oh, Zach Davies, see, he and Zach Davies would be your four, right? Yeah, it's like Tommy Henry, Ryan Nelson Davies, and then Dre Jameson. He's kind of like the long reliever. They like to mix him with Ryan Nelson a lot because Ryan Nelson goes like four innings and then they bring in Dre Jameson to finish off like three after that. Fair enough. So they don't need an ace. No. They actually have decent starting pitching step, uh, depth. Mm-hmm. They don't need – I don't think they need – I mean, if they could get a, a big honking um, slugger in the middle of the lineup – more power to you mm-hmm. you know christian walker is the only slugger they've got going on right now if they can as i said you and i talked about this if they got another just professional hitter in the lineup just another person who's not an automatic out i mm-hmm. think that would go a long way there was a great mark feinstein article uh on mlb.com a couple of days ago where he was talking about some players who are just kind of trapped in the minor leagues like the joe adels of the world who are just sort of Oh, they forever. need a change. They just need a change of scenery. And mm-hmm. if I were the D backs, you know, they're not going to go and make the big Shane Bieber trade, but I would be kicking the tires of like saying, Hey, uh, uh, he's just not doing anything. You're firm. Can we, can we take him off your hands and just see if, let's see if that combination could work. The, the main thing they need to get are one or two arms in the bullpen. And if they could, you know, the, the, the Diamondbacks came into the league the same year as Tampa Bay. If yep. they can find their inner Tampa Bay, and Tampa Bay has that ability to find that pitcher who is being misused in an organization and to get them and say, hey, we need you to do to throw these two pitches in these situations, and we're going to use these in these in these parts. They need to find their inner Tampa Bay and get one or maybe two arms in their bullpen to give them – that added piece of bullpen depth because this is this this doesn't look like a fluke team to me yeah and, and i think the, yeah go run run it's your team okay i was going to let you finish but i was just going to say and i think the d-backs are going to make all the moves possible because They've talked, I mean, if you listen to Lockdown Diamondbacks, they've talked so much about how they have a sense of urgency when it comes to this season, and it all started when it came to that Madison Bumgarner move because he was so bad for this D-backs franchise. Not this, just this year, but the past few years. So cutting him and sending him off to greener pastures signified to the fan base the D-backs are taking this season seriously, and we've seen it with other moves. Alec Thomas, one that heralded prospects in this D-backs organization. You're struggling after a month. You're getting sent down to AAA. Jake McCarthy was 
maybe the best player in the second half of the season for the D-backs last year. He was sent down after three weeks. He's back up now. But the D-backs have a revolving door at outfield. And basically, who's ever hot is getting called up and staying on the major league level. If you're cold, you're being sent down. They want the best players playing at all times. You're going to see this in the rotation with their youngsters. You're going to see this in the bullpen when you've got the closer committee. That's a revolving door. Who's ever hot in the, in the closer role is going to stay there for a prolonged period of time. So the D-backs right now are not afraid to – Make some cutthroat decisions and make sure you have the best players playing at every possible position. And I think once we get to the trade deadline or even before it, the D-backs are going to sniff around some moves. I don't know if they want to necessarily even upgrade the lineup. I don't know if they want to go after a guy who's in AAA. I think if they do go after someone for their lineup, I do think they want someone maybe established. I don't think they just want someone that's a question mark that's going to go in the lineup and take opportunity mm-hmm. away from other guys. I think they want someone established, but most importantly, I think they need a closer, someone that you can definitely trust in that ninth inning because the D-backs have a whole bunch of relievers who you trust in the seventh or eighth inning, a whole bunch of setup guys like the Chafins and Miguel Castro, Scott McGuffs, but no one they trust to come in with a one-run game and needs the three outs to shut the door. The D-backs don't have anyone in their bullpen right now that could do that. They could probably also upgrade the back end of their rotation a little bit, but just because it's so young and it has such a lack of experience. But as it's currently constructed for this D-backs team, I think they are well built for the playoffs. They still got more flaws. And we compare this like D-backs payroll to the rest of Major League Baseball. Like it's insane. The D-backs have one of the lowest payrolls in baseball compared to them to like the Mets or the Philadelphia Phillies who have spent so much money the last couple of off seasons and have not exactly bared the fruits of that. It's a really phenomenal job job by Mike Hazen and the D-backs front office to find all this young talent and the young talent actually develop and turn into stars like Corbin Carroll, who I discussed yesterday on the podcast, Sully. Could Corbin Carroll be the first guy to win Rookie of the Year and MVP in the same season since Ichiro no. Suzuki? Only no, no, I, no, 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 but no, I think he will, no, but I think that he will, he has a great shot of winning the uh, Rookie of the Year. Why Absolutely. not MVP, Sully? Because who's got it? Win. That's a good question. Who does yeah. have it right now? I was looking at it yesterday. Acuna is definitely the favorite if you look at it. Yeah, I would say Acuna right now. But after Acuna, the field is pretty close. And you could. Maybe I was was quick. Maybe I was too quick. Maybe I was too quick. Well, we'll look at There's great teams and great players all around the league. And we're going to see that, you know, when we talk a little bit later, we're going to talk a little bit about attendance. Mm -hmm. Now, we're also going to talk a little bit about Jacob deGrom and sadly what happened there. Uh, but attendance is up, and that's what we're going to be talking about in the third segment of the show. But attendance requires buying tickets. Oh, and what yeah. do you think the best way you would buy tickets? Or how would well, you buy yourself tickets? Let me get my little video overlay for my YouTube audience because there's only one place that I'm buying tickets in today's market. And that is game time because game time takes away the stress. Buying tickets shouldn't be a stressful activity, and so many times it is, but not when it comes to the Game Time app because if you need flash deals and last-minute ticket offers, Game Time is the place to go. Forget planning months in advance. Game Time has deals on tickets right up to the day of the event. Get exclusive flash deals on tickets for football, basketball, baseball, concerts, comedy, theater, and more. The Game Time guarantee means you'll always get the best price. If you find the tickets in the same section and row for less, Game Time will credit you 110% of the difference. It's the fastest growing ticketing app in the country for a reason. Get images of your seat before you buy so you know exactly what to expect when you arrive. Buy tickets in a matter of seconds. Two taps and you're set. That's all. Snag the tickets without the stress with Game Time. Download the Game Time app, create an account, and use code Locked On MLB for $20 off your first purchase. Terms apply. Again, create an account. Redeem code Locked On MLB for $20 off. Download Game Time today. Last minute tickets, lowest price guaranteed. All right. Um, <clears throat> this is not a fun piece of news, and not mm. one. This is. I swear, this is not me gloating. It's not. I have to. I have to say this out loud, because I had Ranger fans furious at me. Some were like contacting our the parent company of Locked On MLB, the Technic Corporation, to have me fired, based on what I was saying about Jacob DeGrom. I'm not kidding. Someone actually did do that. Um, It didn't work. (coughs) I'm still here. Um, But I said 
in the off season that I didn't think it was smart for the Rangers to sign uh, Jacob DeGrom. Now, there was one element of why I thought it wasn't smart that I turned out to be wrong about. You see, I Mm. will do this. If I am wrong, I will admit when I'm wrong. Whoa. And and you hear that? This is a novel concept. Maybe we should all take this up a little bit here in the United States, a little more than we are. Um, I did not think the Texas Rangers were going to be contenders this year. Now, granted, I did not factor in Bruce Bochy as much as I probably could have. I also did not factor the fact that one factor the fact that's got that can't possibly be grammatically correct. That the that the other potential injury risk starting pitcher that they signed, Nathan Yovaldi, why can't the Red Sox find players like him? Ooh. That Nathan Yovaldi would be a Cy Young contender and pitch like a workhorse. I mean, he goes deep in the games. He has a couple of complete game shutouts under his belt. And he has been, if you said there was a pitcher who was going to pitch like an ace for Texas, I think most people assumed it would have been Jacob DeGrom. Mm-hmm. Now, I was wrong. Now, here we are. It is, this is being dropped on the, the sixth day of June. And the Texas Rangers are still in first place by themselves. And I did not expect that to happen. Again, a lot can happen. Remember, the, the Angels were a playoff team at this point last year. A lot can happen. and But I give the Texas Rangers a ton of credit for the way that they've played. And the fact that, you know, John Gray and Nathan Ovaldi have been part of what is a, you know, a very good pitching staff that they have there. Bruce Bochy is showing the fact that, you know, this, is, this team has only lost 20 games the mm-hmm. entire season so far. And, you know, Josh Jung has been their big power guy. And he's been, you know, he's had a very good year. But they've been getting the, the Marcus Simeons of the world and the Corey Seegers of the world have been getting huge hits. And I was, by the way, record show, I was never against the signing of Seeger or Simeon. Uh, the one thing I said about Seeger <clears throat> is I have no clue why the Yankees did not sign Corey Seager. To me, if any person was put on this planet to play in Yankee Stadium was Corey Seager. I digress. Yuvaldi's been a Cy Young contender. Gray has been a borderline Cy Young contender. Uh, Martin Perez, Andrew Haney have been okay. Uh, Dane Dunning has been good. Um, Their bullpen has been good. But DeGrom today was transferred to the 60-day disabled list. Now... You could say that that was a, a clerical move. It was a 40-man roster move. He's already been on the disabled list for a little bit, so moving him over there, they can push things retroactively. I get it. I understand it. But the 60-day DL or injured list, I'm sorry, the 60-day injured list is mm-hmm. not there for I've got a slight sprain. It's there for you're going to miss months at a time. And usually when someone is on the 60-day injured list, they're not suiting up on day 61. It's there to put your players who are really, really kind of sort of hurt. And here we are. We've played more than a third of the season, and Jacob deGrom has given them 30 and a third innings. Yeah, 30 and one third innings. He's been really good. When he's been on the mound, surprise, same thing when he was with the Mets. When he's on the mound, Jacob deGrom is not one of the best pitchers in baseball. He is the best pitcher in baseball. But ah, there lies the rub, as the Bard said. Getting his butt on the mound has always been an issue. And when I was saying, I see no evidence that this guy is going to go through a season and pitch like a workhorse like he had in the past with the Mets and people were yelling at me saying you're stupid you're this you're that I'm gonna get you fired I was right and I don't want to be right baseball's better when Jacob deGrom's healthy and think of where the Rangers would be 
if he gave them more than 30 and a third innings over more than the first third of the season. When is he coming back? Nobody really knows. When you're on the 60-day disabled list, you can do all sorts of shell game stuff. You can move players around the roster and everything like that. And people don't aren't on the 60-day DL because they're right on the verge of getting healthy. And it's yeah. sad, but I wasn't wrong. I was wrong about the Rangers being contenders. That I was wrong about. But I wasn't wrong to say that, yeah, this was uh, – they're not going to get much out of him this year. And I see yeah, and that. And the earliest he could be reactivated, I think, is June 28th. So I don't know if he'll even hit that mark. For Jacob deGrom, I mean, I didn't have an issue with the contract in terms of annual value. I didn't have an issue with giving a contract to a guy of his caliber. My biggest issue with the Jacob deGrom, DeGrom contract was the length of it. What was it, like a five- or six-year deal for a guy at 35 years old? I actually would have been okay giving him the same annual salary if it was like a Scherzer Verlander deal where it's like two to three years and you're overpaying him there. Cause at least it's a short term where you don't feel like you got this big burden on your shoulders over the next few years. And now it's like he's 35. The first season of that deal is already looking pretty shaky. How long can you last? But if you are the Texas Rangers, could this be potentially a blessing in disguise. Let me spin it for you, Sully Baseball, because like you said, they're already 18 games above 500. The rest of your rotation's already looking good with the Grays and the Valdes. Your lineup is doing good. If you are the Texas Rangers and you keep on mowing along all season long, you get to August and you're like, you know what? We are not the best team in the division, but we are one of the best teams in the American League. We still got the best run differential and we're right in the mix for maybe a potential World Series appearance or at least a championship series appearance. How long should we keep DeGrom out for? Should we say, you know what, DeGrom, we're so good. Don't come back until late August. Don't come back until early September. Let's keep you out, and let's make sure you're just healthy for the postseason because if you could play it like that when you're the Rangers and you could keep this winning percentage up until September and then all of a sudden you're adding that talent of Jacob DeGrom and you say, you know what, we just need, what, six, seven starts from you for this postseason. We just need five to six good starts. We don't need a 30, you know, 32 starts over 200 innings. No, if you could give us 30 innings, if you could just basically give us, we've already given up this year, you know, pre-injury, but now just translate that to the postseason. If you're the Texas Rangers, I think you would kind of take that scenario if you could keep this winning pace up and then add DeGrom later in the season, right as you enter the postseason. That's a great point. And they, and, and you and I have made a, a talked about a similar topic that they have the exact manager to do that in Bochi. Yeah. You know, if Bochi is the one who comes up to him, if it's one of these nondescript Joe Bag of Donuts managers, like I, you know, put a put $10 million in front of me right now and say, name the Royals manager right now. I don't think I can. I'm going to look it up. That's a good question. I don't think I can pull that one off. Um, I, I, I still thinking it's Matheny. Um, but Boch, okay. Do you want to, do you want to guess? I have it here. I would have never got this in a million years. It's me, isn't it? I'm it could, manager. you kind of look Sully. You kind of look like this guy, but his name is Matt Quattraro. I believe that's how it's pronounced. Oh, he was in the Rays organization. That's right. Yes. Matt ah. Quattraro. Yeah. All right. Quattaro. Um, never. I think that's First how you pronounce year. it. The fact that we were yeah, okay. <laughs> anyway. Guess so um, not. Boach. Is Beef. you know Hall of Fame manager, champion. And if he comes up, to, you know, brought the Padres to the World Series, won three World Series titles for the Giants, and was able to do things like turn to Tim Lincecum and say, "We're using you out of the bullpen for the postseason." Turn to Barry Zito, who at the time was the highest paid player on the Giants, and said, "Like, and was healthy," and said, "We're not putting you on the roster." It's, you know, he can make these calls and has the multiple rings to show for it. So you're right. If he comes up and he says, hey, DeGrom, we 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 know we can't count on you for 200 innings, but give us the outs we need in October and make it worth our while. Yeah. They, they don't, look at I want I want the DeGrom signing to work. I do. But I just. You're right. I mean, if they signed him to a one-year deal or a two-year deal, mm -hmm. I wouldn't have said a thing. Mm -hmm. It's but a length. Signed, like, he's not suddenly going to get healthy. He's not going to become a – and this is what I said. He's not suddenly going to become a workhorse later. And someone took issue 
saying that that implied that I was saying he never was a workhorse, which okay. is nonsense. He was a workhorse with the Mets, but to say that he is going to go from an injured pitcher to suddenly be a workhorse again in his late 30s is nonsense. Quick so question you have to, to use him perfectly. Do you think the Rangers should attack the rest of the season as if they're not going to get Jacob DeGrom back? Like, should they yes. just keep playing out this yes. season? Like, and maybe you sniff around the deadline and still try to go after a high quality starting pitcher. Jacob DeGrom should be like the $20 bill you find in your winter coat mm, that you forgot that, was in there. That's a great feeling. Yeah. You go, oh, look at that. I got Jacob DeGrom, you know, but to, to, to right there. yeah, I know. So if you go into with that mentality, Great, then it's a bonus. But if you're going to count on them, well, that's not so great. But hey, attendance is up. We're going to talk a little bit about that. But I want to right now bring up look it, I'm a believer in therapy because a lot of times you give so much of yourself to other people that you, you know what? You kind of forget a little bit about yourself. That's where BetterHelp comes in. And this show is sponsored by BetterHelp. Now, Sometimes when you think about, like, I have my family, uh, I'm a teacher uh, in a special education class, so sometimes I got to give a lot to those kids. I can't turn to those kids and say, what about me? You know, we spend all of our time giving. We can be really stretched thin, and then we can get burnt out, and then bad things can happen to yourself with your mental health. Therapy can give you the tools to find more balance in your life so you can cons- continue to support others without leaving yourself behind. Now look at, I've been in therapy for a while and that is not, there's no stigma to that. There's nothing to be shamed about. If you get hurt and you need to go to the doctor, no one looks twice. If you're treating yourself and you're treating what you need for your mental health, guess what? That's smart too. And if you want to start therapy and want to give it a chance, try better help. Because it has all the convenience of what you need. If you need to have online presence, you want to have convenient, flexible, move your schedule around where the therapists are there, and they are licensed therapists. Just fill out a brief questionnaire, get matched, you have the therapist, which if the therapist isn't the right fit, you could switch at any time for no additional charge. You got to find more balance with BetterHelp. Visit betterhelp.com slash locked on MLB today to get 10% off your first month. That's betterhelp, H E L P.com slash locked on MLB. Final segment here talking about attendance. Attendance is up. And look at, I think I, there's several reasons why I think. I think the fact that that you're seeing a lot of teams are still in it. A lot of teams are playing competitive ball. They were going into the summer saying, hey, do we have a shot? Even some of the teams with lousy records, there's a reason to go there. But Mm -hmm. I think it's more than that. I think it's more than that. Tell me why you think attendance is up this year. I'll tell you why I think attendance is up. Well, I think it's really simple. I think it's just the new rules, right? I just think when you have the faster pace to play, people don't feel like they're going to be dragged. And listen, some people love being at the ballpark all day. I love baseball. That's why I do this baseball podcast five days a week. But personally, I don't want to be at the ballpark five hours every day. So I kind of like the fact that sometimes you have to, these games are kind of in and out and you're there for two and a half hours, two hours and 40 minutes. And the pace of it, you can't turn your way, your head away from the action, which is just so different. And then, You got the faster pace to play with the pitch clock. You also just have better pace to play with some of the new rules with the pickoff attempts and the banning of the infield shift. I just think the new rules have just led to an influx of just more people being aware of the game, knowing these games are quicker. And the idea of going to a ballpark doesn't have to take all day, doesn't have to take all your time anymore. I just think that's really enticing to people because I don't think people want sporting events to be an all day thing. People love going to these things, a D-backs game, a baseball game. They're on every day. It should just be a leisurely activity. You know what? I want to go after work. I want to go hit a seven o'clock, six forty baseball game, but I don't want to be there till midnight. Now I could go at six forty and still be home by nine o'clock. It's a beautiful feeling as a sports fan i just think the new rules with how quickly these games are flying by and just the action always feel like something's going on with offense being up across the board those three true outcomes the strikeouts walks and home runs things have started to 
even out a little bit. We see speed back in the game with this D-backs offense, a whole bunch of other offenses. Like We just have little niche things back in the game when it comes to speed, some small ball getting chaotic on the bases. I just feel like we're starting to watch baseball evolve before our eyes. The game's starting to translate into this new modern era, starting to move away from some of those old rules and the old pastimes and the old traditions and say, you know what, let's move into the 21st century and let's get with the times. Yeah, I, I've been to a couple of games at Dodger Stadium this year. And look, at I've, I'll always go to a games, but you can you can absolutely feel the difference. Yeah. You can feel like and, – and it's, again, pace of play and time of game are not the same thing. Mm-hmm. But I will tell you that I was at a game earlier this year that started around 1 o'clock uh, Pacific time, and I was – at Dodger Stadium, first pitch, one o'clock. And I was back here in my home in Pasadena at four o'clock. That mm. was an entire game, plus getting to your car, getting through the Dodger Stadium traffic, <laughs> driving up the 110, and getting my butt back to Pasadena. That used, I mean, that's not a, a slow, you know, that's a very slow process to go through yeah. the whole parking situation at Dodger Stadium. Now, Look, I'm not saying, oh, it's shorter, therefore it's better. But the pace of it is faster. The time of game is, you're, you're right. You can actually say, hey, I'll be home in time to do something else. But so it's like, okay, going to a ball game doesn't suddenly mean I have to sacrifice my entire day. But it also is when you're there, yes, the pitch clock works beautifully. I think pitch clock is great. Get your butt in the, in the box Get your butt on the on the mound. Let's get it going. But the other thing, the speed, bringing speed back to the game, yes. the 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 chain reaction of a guy gets on first base by hit, walk, whatever. They're on first base for a generation. It was don't you move. We're not going to steal bases because we're all jacked up on God knows what. And therefore, we just want three-run homers. And you can't get a three-run homer if you get get caught stealing second base. So just stay there. Now, when they're on there and everyone's watching, he's going! You know, and even the chaos of a runner going, a bunt down, uh, a ball hit on the ground while the runner is going, anything that creates chaos on the field, anything that puts... You're also seeing, I think, there's a bigger emphasis on balls being hit into play. Mm -hmm. I think people are trying to cut down on strikeouts. Because, you know, I mean, look, there used to be like, well, it doesn't matter if they strike out. You'd rather they strike out than hit into a double play. True, but if you put the ball in play, they can make an error. They can find the hole. The You know, it happened, I saw it in the... uh, um, a game the other day uh, when it was, uh, I forget, I think it was whoever the heck Seattle was playing, uh, yeah. where, but it was like, it was a great thing. It was like the runner was going, the guy hit a ground ball, and it just went to exactly where the shortstop was. It was textbook. I'll tell oh, the yeah. other thing. I'll tell That'd the other the thing. Oh, it, may, it may have been the D-backs game. Um, I'll tell you the other one. Banning the shift. Yeah. The, cons- the the ripple effect of banning the shift is you have more diving plays. You have more acrobatic plays. When everyone's standing exactly where the ball is going to go, ground ball here, throw to there, it's not the, those aren't going to show up on ESPN. Neither are yeah. viewers these days, but that's a different story. Oh, yeah. Um, but, th- but, you know, the, the, the pace – the pace of play, the pitch clock, but I think speed brings more into it because you're, you're more involved in the game when there's always action even in between pitches. Yeah, and of course it's easy for me to talk about the D-backs, covering them every day, but I've seen them. I That's a team I've seen take so much advantage of these new rules. Like twice this past week, a guy like Jake McCarthy or Corbin Carroll have gone on first base with one out, and what do they do? They steal second, they steal third, and now all of a sudden you have one out, 
run scoring opportunity just because you got some speed on the bases. And the new rules have also added just a greater emphasis on these defensive catchers. If you got a guy with a cannon behind home plate, that is going to add so much more money in that guy's pocket and the value of that position because the D-backs made this big trade this offseason. They traded away Dalton Varsha, right, for Gabriel Moreno. Moreno is the lead in the league in caught steal percentage. Over half the time, he's thrown away base runners. And that is so huge when you're going against a team like the Atlanta Braves, who has Ronald Acuna, who already has almost 30 stolen bases. Like, teams more than ever are taking off, putting those runners, those speedsters in run scoring positions. And so you need to have great defensive catchers behind the plate. And like you said, you just need to have great defense overall because with the banding of shifts, you can't have a sluggish guy over at shortstop. You got to be more rangy than ever. And that just goes across all defensive positions. And I don't even think the shift has been like dramatic in terms of when you're watching the game, because I still think that, you know, you still see these guys moving over. Maybe it's not as dramatic as before, but you still see these guys moving over and still seeing those baby shifts work at times. And just the fact that you're seeing more balls in the holes than ever before. Like a guy like Joey Gallo actually started this season pretty hot. And I think banning of the shift was pretty good for that. So all these new rules, I mean, even the bases being bigger, is not something that you'd necessarily notice, but it all plays into the speed. The pickoffs all play into the speed. The Major League Baseball had just done a great job of adding chaos back into the sport because when you think about other sports, you got turnovers, right, in basketball, stolen bases, possessions can go back and forth. Same with football. Baseball doesn't have turnovers, so they needed a way to create havoc and chaos in the sport where it's like you don't know what's going to happen at any time and adding speed back that element when you guys start throwing the ball all over the field when you got a guy like Corbin Carroll on first base Christian Walker hits a double down the line and now your defensive outfielders have to throw that ball get that relay in quickly because he might go from first to home I just think speed has been the greatest addition that baseball has added to this season I agree and it makes it more fun to go to the ballpark yeah, and I love sometimes, it. and also like there's one last thing about the you know the time of game. The one thing I'll say about that is there's sometimes if you go to like you're going to see a movie, and you say, oh god, that's three and a half hours, isn't it? Mm, yeah. You got to add in parking. You got to add in the previews at the front and driving back. You're like, do I really want to spend four and a half hours of my day watching a freaking Transformers movie? Mm, maybe. Transformers, maybe. Yeah, no, okay. I, I, <laughs> no. I'm the, no, I'm I'm a 51 year old man. I'm done watching trucks turn into robots. They got but, animals uh, now, Sully. Oh, have oh wow! How robots. how silly of me to think that the the franchise had run out of gas. Yeah, but uh, I'm I'm if you know in. that a ball game is going to fly by, mm -hmm. and it's not going to it's not going to be an all day excursion. You know what? You're more likely to say, oh, "I'll go see the game tonight." Well, either way, I'm going to go see you. Uh, Miller Thomas, tell people where they can find you. Yeah, follow me on Twitter at CareerThomas24 for my personal account. Look up Locked on Dimebacks, both Twitter, Instagram for the podcast handle on all your streaming platforms, on YouTube, Locked on Dimebacks on there as well. And maybe I'll start a new podcast, Locked on Transformers, for anyone who's interested because I would love to talk about all the Michael Bay films and the new one that's coming out. I'm very interested, Sully. I picked the wrong franchise to pick on. Uh, yeah. You can follow us at Locked On MLB Pod. Send your hate email to there or to Sully Baseball on Twitter, Sully Baseball Podcast on Instagram. Talking about the mighty D backs and Rangers. Hey, is that a World Series preview? Ooh. And will they be using Jacob DeGrom as a secret weapon? I don't know, but the attendance will be up. This has been Locked On MLB, Locked On Diamondbacks crossover for the sixth day of June 2023. He's Miller Thomas. I'm Sully. Let's fist pump for another week.